Hello, I'm Ignacio Grifol, and I'm here with Razer Wing. How are you? <laughs> I'm well, how are you, indeed? <laughs> I'm pretty fine. I mean, there is a hot wave here, a lot of hot, but fine. Excellent. Very well. Uh, I want to start the interview with the first question. Uh, can you tell me your first memories about pro wrestling? Oh, goodness. My first memories of pro wrestling were back when I was just a little bird. Um, I was probably maybe four or five years old, something along those lines, watching old uh, WWF shows on Saturday morning. Um, I think at the time, the uh, performers were um, Macho Man Randy Savage, oh. Ultimate Warrior, Tito Santana, Hulk Hogan, of course. Um, goodness, Rick Rude. Uh, all, all those all those folks in like the uh i'd say mid to late 80s yes hmm. oh that's great uh also you have become a pro wrestler uh can you tell me why did you decide to enter into the pro wrestling world uh you know it was it was kind of a snap decision uh <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so so I found myself living in uh, Philadelphia and um, Philadelphia had a, a company called Chikara, which um, was, was famous for their family, family friendly wrestling. Um, and I'd been up here for quite some time and uh, had had considered uh, trying my hand at wrestling. I, I did backyard wrestling um, early in my adulthood. Um, and it was fun, but uh, you know, it, it didn't uh, it didn't exactly do much for me in the t in terms of uh, income. So um, you know, after after many years, <laughs> I I wound up in Philadelphia, and one day I said to my wife, I said, "Hey, you know what? I I'm not getting any younger. Um, would you mind if I went and tried my hand at this?" Um, at the time, Chikara had an intro to pro wrestling workshop, which was a free thing that you could go and and kind of test out your skills and see if wrestling is right for you. Um, and so she gave me her blessing and uh, I went, had a great time. Um, and yeah, I, I, that's I, that's it. I've, I've been, been doing it ever since. I've always been interested in uh, the performance and athletic part of wrestling. Um, I was fortunate enough to be in the right place at the right time to um, kind of make it happen, I guess, yes. Yes. Yes, that's pretty important to be in the very in the place and time. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, uh, you have trained under uh, people like Drew Gulak or Chuck Taylor or Mike Quackenbush. Can you tell me uh, what kind of things did, did you learn from them? Oh, goodness, what didn't I learn? <laughs> <laughs> um Yeah, so uh, my, my trainers uh, included, um, as you said, um, uh, Chuck Taylor, Drew Gulak, Quack, um, also Orange Cassidy, Hello Wicked, um, Icarus, uh, goodness, uh, the, the list goes on, um, Ophidian, um, heck, uh, even uh, Hot Sauce was uh, there for, for a little bit. Um, he might have been... Um, helping out with, um, mm. I believe, either Icarus or Cassidy. I'm not sure. But anyway, anyway, the list goes on. I, I've, I've, mm. <laughs> I've trained under countless folks. Um, the, the primary things uh, I've taken away from my training at, uh, at the Wrestle Factory uh, are, are body agency, um, discipline, mm. um, of course, Lucha Libre in... in yeah almost every facet, um, standard, like typical Lucha Libre, the sort of elegant, um, flowing, uh, acrobatic sort of thing that uh, most folks are familiar with, um, as well as uh, Yave style uh, wrestling, which is a lot of um, interlocking motions um, that was originally brought to the Wrestle Factory by Skyda. Um, and uh, yeah, so so all of that, um, basically learning to keep myself safe while performing these moves um, and learning to not cause uh, too much damage <laughs> to my opponents in order to win you know, win the matches. You know, it's it's uh, I'm I'm in there to win, not to necessarily hurt people. Yeah. So uh, yeah, learning all of that, learning kind of the um, ins and outs about how to, um, I guess, conduct oneself in and outside of the ring to be, you know, a professional wrestler. Yeah. I, I, I saw 
one of the last matches of Mike Quackenbush that he came here in, you know, to Spain to wrestle uh, a kid. It oh, was okay. wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Yes. That uh, was in White Wolf, I imagine? Eh? Was that in White Wolf, I imagine? Yes, in the White Wolf, yes. He came Thanks. and had a match with a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, also, in Chicara, you won the John Lyons Cup. Uh, what can you tell me about your time as champion? Oh, goodness. Uh, that was, it was, it was a very fly time. Um, quite unexpected, as a matter of fact. Um, my partner, Silverhawk, uh, had just relinquished the Young Lions Cup to then Hermit Crab, now King Crab. Mm. Um, and it was, it was quite unexpected. Going into that match, we thought Silverhawk would have, would have had him beat. Um, but uh, things happened, and, and suddenly I got thrust into a match against uh, Hermit Crab, and it was, it was an interesting reign. The start of my uh, Young Lions Cup championship reign was um, interesting in that the match with Hermit Crab saw me beaten from pillar to post. I, I didn't have too much offense except in the beginning of the match. Um, and he turned it around pretty quickly. So by the end of that contest, I was pretty darn beaten up um, and could, could barely stand. Uh, so uh, um, the, the start of my Young Lions Cup championship reign was um, a little bit bittersweet. Um, but hey, I, 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 beat, I beat the guy. Um, and I had a couple of defenses on that. I was supposed to have um, more defenses than, uh, than I wound up having. I think I wound up defending it against Everett Connors. And, oh, goodness, it was uh, the Whisper who was uh, under the Ophidian mask at the time. Mm. Um, yeah, I only, had one. <laughs> I only had one successful defense of the thing. Um, I was supposed to have another six, uh, uh, defense at uh, King of Trios in Wolverhampton, England in 2017. Um, that was supposed to happen on night two against Danny Maloney. Um, and I would have, I would have beaten him up. It would have been, it would have been fly. I would have won no doubt, but, uh, yeah, no, I got a concussion on night one of King of Trios. Um, when we, uh, myself, Nighthawk and Silverhawk faced the Sendai girls, um, Mako Satomura, Cassandra Miyagi, uh, now Michiko Miyagi and, uh, Dash Chisako. Um, yeah, so I, I caught a, a nasty concussion that night and could not compete on the, uh, second night as scheduled. Um, so that was a bit of a disappointment, um, but uh, you know, hey, I, I, I held the I held the cup for eighty four days. It wasn't necessarily the sort of championship reign that I would have preferred, but I was a young Lions Cup champion, and no one can take that away from me. So hey, Kako. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, also, Chikara disappeared uh, two years ago uh, during the speaking out. Uh... Apparently, Mike Quackenbush made some comment in the past. Uh, he shut down the, the promotion. How do you feel when he gave the news that Chikara is closing down? Um, disappointed, hmm. I think, would be the, uh, the word that I would use. Um, it, it's, it's difficult to say i mean hindsight being what it is and even in the moment like mm. uh my, myself and uh danger hawk at the time now mach 10 um and many others had stepped away from chikara in that moment um i think the, the first person to um even say that was happening was hallow wicked and um you know, once once we saw saw that, and Hallow Wicked is a, a person that we look up to and and respect greatly. Um, when you're just like, you know, that's that's it. This is this is done. Like, mm. it, it it's very difficult to associate yourself with um, a, a thing or a company or a situation like that that is just so serious and so um, deplorable. Not necessarily by any like one individual's actions, although certainly there were um, a a person or two that uh, did some things that were irredeemable. Um, let's let's say, um, but uh, to actually answer your 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 question, um, 
yeah, it was just, it was, it was disappointing. Uh, I, I thought that the, uh, the content of the message left a lot to be desired. Um, there, it was certainly questionable in terms of sincerity. Um, I, I don't know that, that that was necessarily the right way to go about responding. I don't know that there really needed to be or that, that any response would have been sufficient. Um, when, when one makes a mistake, it's, it's great to attempt to atone for that. Um, I feel like there's probably a time and a place and a way to go about that. And I just don't think that that was, that was the way. So it was, it was, um, yeah, it was just unfortunate to see, to see that, uh, and, and kind of left, um, myself and, and, uh, many of us kind of shaking our heads. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just, it's very difficult, especially when you're a, a public persona to do that, that sort of like have a, have a dialogue or like, I, I don't know what I would do if I were ever in that sort of a situation. I hope I, I haven't um, done anything that would cause harm to somebody to where I would need to issue that sort of an apology or something like that. Like, that's the one thing that I'm, I'm really, hmm. like I've, I've tried to do my entire life and trying to do as I, as I live is just not be unkind either yeah. intentionally or unintentionally um yeah. you know it's i'm 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 an old bird and um i've i've definitely had my fair share of experiences with folks being unkind to me mm-hmm. and so i i try to i try to live live uh that sort of life where it's like you know do unto others uh i guess but um yeah, I, I hope that answered your question. I know I yeah. ramble. <laughs> yes. Uh, after Chikara closet, uh, you keep wrestling on the independent circuit. Uh, oh, what, really? Yes, I'm sorry, in a lot of promotions like Camp Leapfrog and many others. Can you tell me about your time on the independent circuit? Oh, certainly, yes. Um, I've, I've, goodness gracious, I've wrestled for uh, plenty of companies over the years. Um, it, not just after Chikara closed, but um, even before. Um, companies like Dropkick Depression, which is my current home promotion. Um, yes, some professional wrestlers don't really have home promotions. Um, coming up in, in Chikara, as I did, it was um, very important to me to have a place to call home um, that was familiar. And so Dropkick Depression became my home. Um, I'm, I'm their, their current uh, reigning um, champion, uh, their inaugural Dropkick Depression heavyweight champion. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I'm very proud to represent Dropkick Depression. Um, they do a lot for mental health awareness and charity and all that. Um, but yeah, I've, I've wrestled for Dropkick Depression. I've wrestled for um, Pro Wrestling Explosion. I've wrestled for Beyond Wrestling, Demand Lucha, where I'm going mm. to be next month, um, Camp Leapfrog um, before uh, that that um, shut it's down. Fun. I'm not entirely certain if that's coming back. Um, High Tension Wrestling, uh, where I'm going to be at this weekend. Um, mm. Goodness gracious, Sean Henderson Presents, where I'm also going to be at this weekend. I've got a lot coming up. Um, I've started wrestling for H2O, Hardcore Hustle Organization. Um, yeah, goodness gracious. Uh, I will, and and I would be remiss if I didn't mention Interspecies Wrestling, ISW. Um, yeah, that, that's been a, a really great promotion. I've, I've uh, been to two of their events now. Um, mm. And yeah, it's, it's always a good time at, at a lot of these places. Um, yeah, yeah. Getting after it, you know? <laughs> Cook off. <laughs> Also, uh, I want to ask you about drop, drop kick depression, drop kick depression, because is the promotion that uh, promotes the mental health and wants to help people with problems in pro wrestling. Uh, mm-hmm. What can you tell me about this topic? Because now mental health is one of the primary topics of this year. Oh yeah, certainly. Um, uh, Dropkick Depression's mission is to basically help provide mental health resources and raise money for such things and local charity organizations. Um, 
nearly every event that we do, I, I'm almost certain every event, but I'll, I'll say nearly so that I don't um, be incorrect here. Um, nearly every event that, that Dropkick Depression does has some sort of a local charity affiliation where we're trying to raise money either through ticket sales or merchandise sales or a raffle or something along those lines. Um, we've done things for Mm. Uh, women's shelters we've done things for local animal uh shelters and adoption agencies that sort of stuff um yes yeah, it's, it's been it's been really really great um and just i'm i'm happy to be a part of it um mm. dropkick depression uh did a uh a a, a a collaboration with a um oh goodness the uh Oh, the company's name is is oh, I'm it's escaping me. But basically, it was a um, a company that worked to educate people on how to handle harassment and abuse in the workplace or just in general. Um, and we had this um, big like seminar that was open to people who wanted to sign up for it. Yeah. Um, that, that really helped out. It was it was kind of a um, response to the speaking out movement and all of that. And just hey, this this insidious, just this in this this festering business of of abusers in professional wrestling in particular. Um, which I mean, it, it's not just professional wrestling, other entertainment medium, like video game design, comics, entertainment, all that. Like it is a thing that is all over the place, but specifically in professional wrestling in order to help um, individuals, promoters, fans, mm -hmm. performers kind of understand, hey, these are the signs to look out for. This is what abuse looks like. And this is what you can do about it. And this is what you can do to, to be an ally, to be actually helpful and not just stand there and kind of look the other way or, or that sort of thing. Um, so, oh, RAIN, that's what it was. R-A-I-N-N, Dropkick Depression, X Rain. That's that's what the uh, organization was. Sorry, I get hit in the head a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I just, I love being a part of Dropkick Depression. Um, the locker room is great. The vibe there is great. Um, Tara Calloway, the owner, uh, and her husband, Jeff Cannonball are great. Um, everyone's just, it's, it's such a, it's such a great place to be. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so it's important because uh, last year we had two losses. That is Hanakimura and Daphne. That they the first for social media harassment and the other because uh, yeah. he passed away. So I think it's important to talk about me mental health. Right, right. There's always been this stigma over it. Um, and I'll, I'll be uh, quite, quite frank and, and, and say, you know, I, for the longest time, didn't want to deal with my own mental health issues simply because it, it made me feel like less of a person um growing up in in the environment that i was in it was always sort of keep a stiff upper lip um no whining don't cry all that stuff right uh and and there was this sort of air of um detriment around admitting that that you had a problem um I think it's very important to have a, a sort of come to terms moment where you're like, okay, you know what? I can't do this on my own. I need help. And there's no shame in that. No. It's it's important to be able to talk to somebody who isn't necessarily going to judge or, or look down on you mm -hmm. for having whatever feelings you're having. Because mm -hmm. I mean, shoot, now more than ever, um, I know that's a cliche phrase, but I mean it now more than ever, like, stuff is messed up yeah and if you're not talking to somebody uh, you should be like it's mm -hmm. yes. it's important yes there is a wonderful uh what what uh somebody asked uh, randy service macho man uh, you are the macho man did you ever cry and uh, macho man says of course I, i'm the macho man and i have to experiment all range of emotion i have cried 
10,000 times and I'm gonna cry 10,000 more. Mm -hmm. So it was very great to say I'm the macho man and I, of course I cry. Absolutely. Yes. Well, uh, another question. Uh, you first started as a Razor Hawk and now you are Razor Wing. Uh, yeah. Why did you change your name? Just basically looking to make a, a clean break from the past. Mm. You know, once, once the whole uh, Chikara thing happened uh, in 2020 where it closed down, we all went away. Um, there, was, there was this moment where a lot of a lot of folks um in in like wrestling twitter would always refer to us as the chikara kids mm -hmm. um and for a while it was sort of a cute endearing sort of oh yes haha we're we're the chikara kids we're the fun ones we're the 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 drama club we're the land of the misfit toys. Um, we're the folks who do the comedy wrestling, right? And it's like, yeah, yeah, that's part of it, right? We wanna, we wanna have fun. We wanna do lucha. We wanna, we wanna have people enjoy themselves. But you know, we're not going out there and and play wrestling. Like this is serious business, and we are professionals, and we have been trained as such. Um, and I think in order to leave a lot of that baggage behind us, um, many of us felt as though we needed to yes. just kind of shift gears a little bit. So I, I went from being Razor Hawk um, initially to being Neo Wing, um, just new wing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't really like that moniker too much. I think I stuck with Neo Wing for like a month or two, something along those lines before Mach 10 and I decided, you know what? No, it doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. You're not, you're not Neo, you're Razor. Yes. And so I was like, well, I don't want to be Razor Hawk. Let me be Razor Wing. That'll work. Yeah. Um, and so I, uh, not only changed my name, but also changed my look. Um, I spoke to my friend Kira, um, who is a, a fantastic artist. Um, they uh, worked uh, tirelessly uh, alongside um, another person, Elizabeth uh, Bray, on a comic called Rubber Match, um, a pro wrestling love story. Um, and I actually got to do some consulting on that. Uh, it was it was a very very fly endeavor, um, but I I tapped my friend Kira who um, had done some merchandise artwork for me to redesign my gear my look, um, and that's that's the look that I I wear today with the um, diamond uh, emblem here. I've got the open bit here on the mask. Um, the flares are a little bit different. Um, the tail is a little bit different. The gear has more of a, um, almost more of a, uh, uh, like an Evangelion feel, if you are familiar with Neon Genesis Evangelion, the, the anime. Um, so it's a more sleek, more sort of superhero sort of thing um, that I was going for. Um, the, the old gear, uh, which was designed by Closet Champion, um, that took... Uh, lots of inspiration from the old 80s cartoon Silverhawks, uh, if you're familiar with, with that. Um, and so it was it was kind of like a Silverhawks Tron sort of thing. But um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really digging the gear that I've got now. Uh, I've been working on getting a new set of gear um, and, a, and a new mask. Yes. Um, and that stuff is underway. The, ma the mask is done. I'm not ready to debut that yet. Um, but uh, maybe maybe folks will see that, uh, I don't know, this October or something along those lines. Um, but yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that it was important to make as much of a clean break as possible um, and just kind of be like, look, you know, this, this was me, this is me now. And um, you're you're gonna you're gonna respect me as me, and not as the Chikara performer. Do you know what I mean? Yes, like Batman. That there is Robin, and no, I'm not Robin. Night Nightwing now. Mm, yes, indeed, absolutely. Also, I want to talk about 
your look because uh, suddenly you have become a, a trending topic because a kid, the Spanish wrestler, appeared in NXT as Axiom and he wears a mask that is very, very similar to yours. Uh, can you tell me what do you think about this? Yeah, um, I, I want to try and be as um, diplomatic as possible um, for, for a variety of reasons. Um, um, when Axiom was teased, uh, I believe it was the 12th of July, uh, this past July 12th, when Axiom was teased, I I didn't even know about it for, oh goodness, at, I would say probably a couple of hours, if memory serves. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't follow WWE that much these days. Um, uh, th that might reflect poorly on me. Maybe I'm just a bad independent wrestler. I don't know. But um, I haven't had a whole lot of... Um, reason to 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 follow their product i so let me let me break it down for you okay i i work um this is real this is real life now i work 40 hours a week at a full-time job my wife works 40 hours a week at a full-time job yes. uh we have two kids oh. i've got a uh, nine-month-old boy um and a three and a half year old girl um and they are a handful uh let me tell you so most of my free time is is spent yeah. helping out with that um so i don't get a whole lot of of time to train i don't get a whole lot of time to watch tapes as they say um and so what little wrestling i i do um have the ability to to take in um i i try and be uh very judicious with that and make sure that it's only stuff that um i'm really interested in or that's going to benefit me um and so i i think uh that day I think it was Mach 10 who who might have um reached out to me and and said, Hey, um, what do you think of this? Uh, does this look like something that we're gonna have to address? Um, and it was the Axiom teaser, um, the, the one where he was thumbing through the, the comic book pages and doing the flips and doing the little ricochet pose and all that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um and I took a, I, 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 at first I was taken aback. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, this, this looks similar. Um, but when they did the initial reveal, right, and he kind of came out of the darkness, the mask was different enough from what I could see. I was like, oh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, right? Okay, it's gold and black and whatever, but like maybe they're going to do new colors or maybe the mask is going to be totally different or what, I, I don't know, you know. So, I, I got the impression that it was not going to be as similar as it turned out to be. Um, mm -hmm. And I actually, once again, I didn't see NXT live when Axiom made their debut. Um, I, I fell asleep early because I was helping out with the kids. Mm -hmm. So I woke up, I want to say probably three hours or so after NXT had done aired. Um, and I woke up to tons of messages from a whole bunch of people, uh, friends, family, fans, promoters, people being like, did you get signed? Did you, did you get like, is this, is this razor wing? Like what's going on here? Um, there were several people that legit thought that that was me on NXT television. Um, and there were also people that knew and, and, uh, were calling it out as, a, a ripoff. Um, so I watched the match, um, and I watched the the teaser beforehand, um, where he stepped out of the shadows and and did this this thing, uh, and I just kind of shook my head because it I I was led to believe something different than what wound up actually. Uh, being being the, the 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 truth of the matter, um, it was black and gold. The mask was very similar to mine. Um, yeah, it, a lot of people, a lot of folks are like, "Oh, well, I'm just a teenabless ripoff." Um, 
which, okay, fair enough. The masks do look similar. Um, but where Razorwing and T. Nablus differ is T. Nablus is just basically a round mask with the, the triangular, like the rounded triangular cutout. Mm. There isn't all of this flare. Like you don't have this little pointed bit here. You don't have the the uh, wings coming off and all of that. Um, so it's it's... I see what people are saying, but yeah, I don't. I don't think that comparison holds any water. Um, the Axiom mask, it it looks pretty darn close. Like it's got this. It's got like the little point going on here. This part is open, and yeah, I I just I you know I what what can you say? What can you say? Um, I. I'm disappointed, not necessarily at uh, whoever's under the mask. I'm not necessarily disappointed at Axiom. Uh, I'm disappointed at uh, whoever created that as a as a thing, um, because they should have known better. Um, there's and and I'm gonna I'm going to sound kind of full of myself here, um, but this isn't necessarily about about me like this is like there is no way that wwe didn't know about razor wing mm. and razor wing looked like um and without giving too much away i i just like i can say that like that that's that's for certain um so yeah like it's it's just it's disappointing um you know, I, I worked very hard to make Razorwing what Razorwing is. The indestructible Lucha Wonderbird, altruistic to a fault. And this is what people associate me with, is, is doing the bird pose, having the mask, being real goofy and, and you know, all that. And to, to see, to see that kind of just like, no, we're just gonna take this, and you know, mm. it's it, yeah. it it makes me more than a little sad. I feel I feel a certain kind of way about it. Um, but hey, who knows? Uh, I just saw on a on a live event uh, picture Axiom doing uh, this one. So uh, you know, maybe maybe he's gonna uh, start ripping off Mach Ten. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> it's uh, no, I just yeah, it's it's hard because i get that when you're employed by a, a a big big company like like they're going to tell you what to do yes um so yeah, there is that yeah, less freedom it's hard like i i don't i don't know i don't really know what what there is to say about it other than yeah mm -hmm. it sucks and i'm disappointed um by a lot of it uh and i can just hope that what has what has already occurred to in in terms of this like this this whirlwind of of just it's such a mess yeah. uh people thinking that i've gotten signed who if the promoters are thinking i've gotten signed they're not going to reach out to book me oh. um and it's like if there's this this uh person on WWE television uh, that looks like this are any of WWE's competitors, big or small, going to want to pick me up? I don't know. Probably not because they're just going to look at me and go, "Oh, hey, that's that 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 uh, that's a ripoff of what WWE was doing." And it's like, come on, yeah. I've been doing this since 2016. Ugh, it's it's super frustrating. Um, and, uh, you know, I just, I hope um, that it hasn't just straight up torpedoed my career. Um, but I'm afraid that maybe it did. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. I've got a couple of things coming up. Uh, and we'll see if, if that continues. Uh, know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not trying to be doom and gloom about it. And I'm really not trying to be dramatic about it. I'm just trying to be realistic. Yeah. Uh, Cause it's like, yeah, like it. Even even if it was like, 
I just, oh God, there were so many other ways to go about this. And this is how it happened. And I'm like, oh, this is not what I wanted right now. Like, oh, yeah, I've, I've got so much going on right now, like in my life. And this is not something I want to be dealing with at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, I've, I've had to put out some fires, do a little bit of damage control and, and let people know, no, that's that's not me. Um, still available, still here. Please, bookings and signings me. Mm. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, what this remind me of uh, another storyline that happened 10 years ago when uh, WRI signed Sin Cara and then appeared the Sin Cara Negro, where uh, he challenged to a uh, mass versus mass. Do you think this is going to happen? You appear in Dark Guy saying, you take something from me. I challenge you to a mascara versus mascara. I mean, you know, they, they say never say never yes. in wrestling. Um, but if if I had to put money on it, and I'm not a betting bird, um, but if I had to put a wager on it, I'd say that's probably not going to happen. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know about all that. Um, I certainly don't want to be. Uh, I certainly don't want to take my mask off uh, at any any time soon. Um, mm. You know, for not, not for the least of, of uh, reasons is so people don't see all the goofy faces I, I make uh, <laughs> while I'm wrestling. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, yeah. I don't know. I, on the one hand, that would be really cool. Mm. Uh, but on the other hand, I don't know that the circumstances surrounding the, the build up to it. I don't know. I don't know. It just yes, yeah. Like it's it's kind of yeah. I don't know. Maybe, but probably not. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to think about. <laughs> well, uh, also uh, a few days ago, it happened something similar because uh, I read the news that Carmela used a. Uh, a cat spread like uh, a badass with a great ass and appear another wrestler saying, hey, that's my cat spread. Oh, shoot, really? Yes, it's one from NWA, uh, Natalia, I think, and it's like, sometimes this, this kind of thing happens that you say something and it's like, hey, there is another that one that is using that phrase. Yeah, <laughs> no, I definitely, I, I... So I heard rumblings about that. I didn't know exactly what the context was, um, but that's oh man, that's that's a thing. That's yes. really, I've definitely heard of situations uh, like that in the past, where um, not necessarily WWE, but like companies like WWE um, might have used a catchphrase that that other independent uh, performers were using, um, mm. and yeah, that just it happens. Like there's it's it's very difficult. I'm not going to sit here and um, pretend like these sorts of things don't happen yes. uh, sometimes by happenstance, right? Because yes. there's only so many words in, in the, the dictionary. Um, there's only so many uh, combinations of body movements mm. and combinations of things. But when you get a certain combination of things, uh, melded with another certain yes. combination of things, melded with another certain co and that sort of thing comes together to make something that looks pretty darn similar to another thing. Yes. Then it's, then it's like, okay. It's it's like the vanilla ice um, and, and cream thing, where it was like under pressure and ice ice baby. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of the best analogy I can think of. It's like, din 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 din. You know, it's like, no, it's, it's the same. It's the same. Um, yes. But, wow, that's that's really crazy. I didn't know uh, the the details of the whole. Uh, yes. Also, um, it happened with I, FTR that when they left WWE, uh, they were the revival, uh, and they renamed like we are the Revolt, and appear a tag team say, "Hey, we have that name. We are the Revolt," and it's like, "Oh, sorry." Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yes. Also, yeah. uh, I want to ask because uh, your first name was. Uh, Razor Hog, now you are Razor Wing. Can mm -hmm. we expect that your next evolution is Razor Crest? Well, I'm sorry, you run that by me again, Razor what? Razor Crest. 
Razor Crest. Like the Boba Fett or the Mandalorian Spacey. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh my goodness. Uh, maybe. Probably not. I don't know. Oh. Maybe. I don't know. That's good. Mm -hmm. uh, Razor Crest. Oh, Boba Fett has pretty cool. Hey, that Something like that. Yeah. We have to workshop that, but who knows? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, no, it's because I I saw your name and I said Razor, Razor, yes, the next evolution like the the level thirty Razor form. No doubt, no doubt. Yes. Yeah, I have to have to look into that, workshop that a little bit. <laughs> also uh, uh, a few days ago we had the huge news that this man Macon uh, left WWE, he decided to yeah, retire. Yes. What do you think? You know, good, good on, uh, good on him for I guess um, knowing when to uh, when to hang him up. Um, I, I there's been a lot of speculation as to like reasonings for that. Um, I don't like to speculate on those sorts of things just because like personally, I'm just like I, I don't like a whole lot of gossip. Um, if I can help it, but uh, man, seventy-seven years old, right? Mm, like, yes. that's a long time to be doing something like that. And you know, I, I sure hope that I have, I guess, something that I'm that passionate about mm. at seventy-seven. Um, if I'm being honest, I'm probably just gonna be. Hopefully, enjoying some sort of retirement if I can, if I can get any. <laughs> yes. um, hopefully, well before seventy-seven. My goodness. Um, yeah. No, I, I don't. I, I don't know how he did it as long as he did. Uh, but yeah, like that's crazy. It's 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 going to be interesting to see what WWE might be mm. without Vince McMahon. Um, you know, having having never worked there myself. I can't tell you how much of a hand uh, he's had in, in things in these past several years, um, but of course the the wisdom has always been that like the buck stops with the KM. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be. I think that it's interesting times ahead, uh, and uh, yeah, hmm. yeah, it's just interesting. It's just it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, uh, I have seen that you have mainly worked on the United States. Uh, do you want to travel to other countries, for example, Europe, Japan, or Mexico? Oh, I would love to. I've, I've wrestled once in Europe. Um, I've wrestled, uh, goodness, uh, twice, almost three times in Canada. Um, I'd love to go to Mexico. I'd really love to go to Japan. Japan is like where I want to wrestle. Um, yes. And, you know, I, I was trying to make inroads on that um this year uh but then we were we were blessed with a, a baby boy and uh, that kind of took precedence so you know it's, it's i'm not getting out there as much as i would like to um and it's not for a, a lack of willingness like promoters um when, when i talk to them they get the impression that i'm not trying to to take a lot of bookings um and that's not true. I, I definitely want to do it, and you know, if, if given enough time in advance, like I can make myself available. Like it can happen. Um, I've got a passport. I can travel. Let's make it happen. My rate is reasonable. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, go put me on your show. I I am a very good. Uh, well, no, no, that one's taken. Very good professional wrestler is taken. Um, well, now it's. I mean, good. I'm a very fly. I am a fly professional wrestler, and I can I can get it done in the ring. Just ask anybody. Just ask anybody. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I would love to. It's just uh, a matter of you know making the connections and making it happen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is your favorite Japanese promotion? Where do you see working? No, oh, Michinoku Pro. Michinoku, oh. Michinoku or DDT, I yeah. think would be uh, would mm -hmm. be a lot of fun. Mm. Um, yeah, just, just a place where I can get wild um, with a bunch of people that are as crazy as me. Well, that's the whole interview. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. My pleasure. Hey, uh, thank you so much, Ignacio, and stay fly. <laughs> <laughs>